balance go down. So when cash paid, cash decrease, credit. When liability decrease, debited. So entry would be accounts payable to cash. So those who make a wrong entry, please confirm that. And if still you do not understand that, please ask here. I would be happy to repeat. So Harry, Ella, Marilyn, Nam, Anthony, Pinyo, Kim, and Dayon. Understand? Hunjun Kim, Dayon, Pinyo, Anthony, Harry. Understand? Yes. Uh, yes. Yes. Okay. Good deal. Okay. Let's move forward. So when we now, when we no, this is this is just a journalized entry. Now let's post it into our T accounts. When you post it, so how many accounts you need to create? First, supplies. Accounts payable, this accounts payable? No, because it will be recorded in one account payable. Cash. So we need to make three T accounts: cash, supplies, and accounts payable. All you need to do, you need to post. In first entry, supplies is debited and cash is credited. So you just write it down here. Right? A uh, supplies to accounts payable, right? And then in second transaction, accounts payable to cash. Right? So how much does business owe? So balance 3600. Right? How much is the outsider claim? Just take out the balance of accounts payable. So the credit side is 3600 greater than the debit side or the balance is 3600. Right? This is how we analyze the transaction and how we make a journal entry and how we transfer the journal entry to ledgers or posting right so for constructing the trial balance let's take a 10 minutes break and then we start from here okay class welcome back after the break okay so our Sixth learning objective is construct and a use uh, construct and use a trial balance. So, what is trial balance? A trial balance basically lists all the accounts with their balances. <clears throat> so, this is not a financial statement. Remember, financial statements are only four: number one, income statement; number two, balance sheet; number three sorry number one income statement number two retain earning statement number three balance sheet and number and number four cash flow statement so the basically the trial balance it lists all the accounts with their balances so in our previous example in which we say that the cash balance is thirty three thousand three hundred right so basically rather going into the books of accounts and registers and T accounts and see the balance, we make a trial balance statement so that we don't have to physically go and find out the balance of each register, each T account and copy uh, to make income statement, retain earning statement and balance sheet, right? So we make a statement in which we list all the, uh, you know, accounts and their balances. So we, we'll, list according to their liquidity first we write it down the assets first we write it down the assets according to their liquidity it means cash first which means current assets first and then long-term assets and then we write liabilities first current liabilities and then long-term liabilities and then we write it down shareholder equity so if the account balance is debit, so we write it down on the, bad, on, the, on the debit side. If it is credit, we write it down on the credit side. And at the end of trial balance, all the debit balance total equals to all the credit balance totals. 
So this indicates that there is no error in that you make during uh, an analysis of transaction. So it is prepared usually at the end of the period. And what is the purpose of this trial balance? It facilitates preparation of financial statements. So how it looks like, here we go. <coughs> so you see, this is not a financial statement. This is trial balance worksheet. This is not the required, uh, you know, by law. This is for your own facilitation, which help you to make income statements. So you all write it down. First of all, you write down the account title. So this is trial balance, debit column and credit column. So you see, you write it down on liquidity basis, cash, account receivable, supplies, prepaid, rent, land, equipment, accumulated deposition. See, all the balances are here. So the balance of debit items are written on the debit side. So those who with the, you see, you see the, you see here the dividends. So first of all, you write down the assets and then you write it down the liabilities and then you write it down the stockholder equity. And after stockholder equity, you write it down the income statement accounts, revenue and all expenses. So at the end, you see the total here, the total of the debit side must be equal to credit side. So this is not a rocket science here. You just put it all the balances of the T accounts. So this is the T account, all the balances of all balances of the T accounts. For example, for example, this is cash. And here there is 36,800 36, is the balance of the cash on the debit side. So you just write it down cash debit side 36,800. You just write it down. So in, in, in practical, this cash is basically, sorry, this cash is basically register the big register in which the accountants, they make physical entries and also they also write it down in computers as well. So small businesses, they make parallel databases, both physical databases of all the books, all the registers and place it in, in, in business cabinets in office and on computer. So that if some virus comes or something happens, fire broke down, it's a natural disaster or whatsoever. So you must have the backup data as well, right? Okay. Now analyze the accounts. So <clears throat> if you pay close attention to the cash, cash T accounts. So we know that cash increase, we call this debit. Right? So it means in normal business circumstances, why cash is increased? Because we are receiving cash from our, from our customers, right? And cash decrease. Is credit in normal business circumstances, uh, circumstances, why cash is decreased because of payments, right? So it means we can analyze the cash account. Why we are analyzing the cash account? Because cash account is the most necessary and valuable account in an organization because this is the blood of an organization, right? So we can easily analyze the cash account. So let's see the uh, illustration here and then you understand what does it mean. So we know that if there's a cash receipt, cash receipt, it means cash is increased. So it would be written on the debit side, right? Written on the debit side. And if there is a payment which means cash decrease, cash decrease means credit. So it would be written on credit side. So we can just analyze it in, in like an, you know, equation type. If one variable is missing, you can easily 
uh, rearrange the, uh, the equation and you can find out the missing data. So similar here, if all the things are given and you one thing is not given, you can easily find out. So in this case, in this illustration, we are just using, uh, we, we are analyzing the accounts by using this transaction, this illustration. So let's read that. Suppose Freddy's auto service begin May with cash of 1000. So balance. So this is the balance. So now, so now how did you realize that this is a debit balance? That, that should be the question. So how did we realize this, that this is a, because question is silent about whether this is a debit balance or credit balance. So remember, if question is silent, then make, then see the, uh, see the account, whether this account is associated to asset, liability or shareholder, shareholder equity. So asset, normal balance, always debit because we know that asset increase debit. So cash is an asset, asset increase mean debit. So if question is silent, then automatically assume that this is a debit balance. So if this is a liability, so liability normal balance would be credited. Why? Because liability increase mean credit. Right everyone? Ella, Anthony, Harry, Marilyn. Good. So when question is silent regarding the balance, so always assume that this is a normal balance. Otherwise the question will mention itself that this is a debit balance or credit balance, right? So since cash is our asset and asset increase mean debit, so debit side would be the normal balance. So we just write it down thousand at the balance here. So Freddie received cash of 8,000 and, and ended the month with a cash balance of 3,000, right? And ended the balance of 3,000 here. So it means ended balance. So again, question is silent. It means it's a debit balance. Even if this whole T account is not given to you, you can also, also recreate that. Why? You do normal balance. So, so you can put total cash payments by analyzing Freddy's cash account. So we know that on the credit side, there must be a cash payments. So how much is the Freddy's cash payments? So remember, what did we talk about that? Okay, who messaged me? Mm, okay. Okay, Ella, you can watch the video. Okay. So here, uh, we know that on the right hand side, there, was, there must be payment. So how much is the payment? Because we know that the concept of balance is that debit side is 3000 greater than the credit side. So how much is the debit side here? 9,000. So if we analyze the total here, it is 9,000. So it means the credit side is, must be 6,000. Then we get this 3,000 balance, right? So this is how you can analyze the account and you can also find the missing value here as well. Right? So this is just the concept behind that. Right? And how you find out that? Because the concept of balance is that which, whichever side is greater, on that side we write down the balance. So debit side is 3000 greater than the, uh, 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 than the credit side. So you add all the debit.